On this episode, we take the new Atlas Cross Sport into the mountains to test out all the features. Is this midsize crossover up to the challenge? We find out right now on this episode of Driving Sports TV. This is the 2021 Atlas Cross Sport. It's the sportier two-row version of Volkswagen's popular three-row midsize crossover. The model we're testing today is the loaded SEL Premium. This comes standard with four motion all-wheel drive, virtual cockpit digital gauge cluster, surround view camera, and leather seating. Price as you see it here, 47,720 US dollars, including destination. Under the hood is a standard turbocharged 2-liter 4-cylinder engine. This produces up to 235 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. It's connected to an 8-speed automatic transmission and it powers all four wheels using a 5th generation clutch pack based all-wheel drive setup designed by Borg Warner and branded as 4Motion. Standard tires are all-season Goodyear's wrapped around 20-inch alloy wheels. EPA rates economy of this setup at 20 MPGs in town and 24 on the highway. Towing capacity is limited to 2,000 pounds on the turbo model. V6 editions can tow up to 5,000 pounds. Because this is a five-seater based on a seven-seater design, the trunk has a nice 40.3 cubic feet of cargo capacity. Fold the second row down for up to 77.8 cubic feet. This is almost identical to the class-leading Honda Passport. Under the floor is a spare and a subwoofer. With the seats back into position, the second row provides lots of room to stretch out. I'm six foot one and I have loads of room. Window shades are even standard at this trim level. It also has a fold down armrest with cup holders, heated seats, USB-C sockets, and an AC power outlet. Moving up to the main cabin, the power button is placed low next to the transmission control. Once on, the virtual cockpit gives a nice view of all critical data. This is a really nice display, borrowed from Audi, that incorporates maps, safety systems, and general information in a highly configurable and attractive layout. Using the steering wheel controls, you can change different views, as well as set up the adaptive cruise control system. I like how it sets a marker on the speedometer for the target speed. It's little details like that that make this digital display one of the better options on the market. The rest of the interior isn't quite as good as an Audi, but it is good for the class, with a nice combination of colors and materials. It even has a massive panorama sunroof. The seats feature two-tone leather with power adjustments and three memory positions. They also include both heat and ventilation standard on this trim level. The central infotainment screen is a standard 8-inch touchscreen using Volkswagen's Discover Media system. This is an older setup, but I like it better than the new system introduced in the ID4 Electric. Here, the graphics are clean and easy to understand at a glance, and the system responds quickly to touch inputs. It's also tied into the vehicle, allowing you to modify the layout of the main gauge cluster in addition to configuring all the safety systems. And in terms of active safety, this Atlas Cross Sport is nicely equipped. Adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, blind spot warnings, street sign display, and collision mitigation are all here. Switch into reverse for a rear view camera or a parking surround view with integrated sensors. For mobile devices, wireless charging and wireless Apple CarPlay are included. Android Auto is available only through USB. If you prefer satellite radio, the XM channel control makes it easy to pick the right channels. Of course, AM and FM are also supported. Now let's hit the road and see if this Atlas Crossport lives up to its good looks. Hit the freeway. It's pretty good. It is, of course, a two liter and it is turbocharged, and it seems to produce enough oomph to get this fairly large crossover up to, you know, highway speeds. 
Now it is kind of funny that when it comes to tow capacities, it's limited by the chassis, at least it is in crossovers. However, this one's a little different because this two liter turbo can only tow 2,000 pounds. If you wanna to tow up to 5,000 pounds, which is really good for the class, you have to go up to the V6 version. Same chassis, so I'm not really sure why the turbo can't do better than a measly 2,000 pounds. I'm sure it's just Volkswagen being ultra conservative. But for whatever reason, that's what we're looking at. Now on the freeway, this is really quite quiet for the class of vehicle. And the suspension is really smooth. This is a great freeway experience. I have comfortable seats that I can do a ton of adjustments to. They're heated and cooled, which is nice. And uh, yeah, comfortable, they support well. At least they support my frame well. I have good visibility out of the side mirrors and out of the back. Now let's try out some of the uh, fancy stuff. Now this does have adaptive cruise control. All I do is hit on, travel assist active, and then I can set my speed. One thing I really like is that on the gauge cluster, it allows me to move a little marker showing me where my target speed is, which is cool. And then of course it paces the vehicle in front of me and I can set how far I'm gapped uh, with one, two, three, four, five different levels. Now in terms of lane centering, it doesn't have it. All this has is lane detection, and the lane detection is quite good. It's very subtle. It kind of pushes the steering wheel back into the lane for you, but it won't drive around corners like some of the other cars in this class will do, like the Kia Sorento X-Line that will track as you're going around a corner. This one, yeah, it won't. But it is a good lane detection system, so if you're getting like lazy or you're getting tired, it will bump you back into the lane like that, so you know, you will be safer on long trips or for the occasional mistake. I would have no complaints about driving this every day. You know, it's comfortable, it's got tons of storage space. The engine manners are quite good on the freeway. Yeah, I like it. Now let's dip off the freeway and see how it does on a windy road. The funny thing about this turbo is it doesn't feel as powerful as the V6 because it's not, but it also doesn't feel surgy like it's a small displacement engine with a big turbo to get big numbers yet provide jerky drivability. No, this is really smooth. It feels like a bigger motor. I, I wouldn't say it feels like their standard V6, but it feels maybe like a really small V6 in that you don't have a ton of peak horsepower, but it is smooth to come on, which I like. I don't think anybody would really feel this as a compromise, of course, unless you need the 5,000 towing capacity that you only get with the V6. Uh, if you need that, then this is clearly not the option for you. I love the suspension on this, it's so smooth. This might be one of my favorite suspension setups in this class, because this is just great. As far as suspension that isn't fancy, you know, like no air suspension or special like hydraulic linkages or anything like that, this one just tracks smooth, it's comfortable, it absorbs irregularities that we see on so many roads. Now there are of course different drive modes here, everything from snow, which will cut power, uh, to uh, sport. Now let's, in, uh, let's see, let's go to, Let's go to sport mode, see if that changes things up. Throttle tip in is a little more aggressive. Let's see, does that transmission hold gears? Yeah, transmission holds all the way up to red line. And then of course we have other modes too, including off-road and off-road custom. We'll tap into those when we head into the forest. But first, let's do a zero to 60. I'm gonna put it into sport mode to give it the best opportunity that it can. Let's go into sport mode. That's in sport and three, two, one, go. Uh, a little slow and boom, there it goes. Oh, come on, you're gonna get there. And 60 in eight seconds. Not fast. Let's try it the other way. And can I turn off auto start stop on the engine here? I'm thinking that might be causing a little bit of stumble at the start. Uh, settings, back, oh, can I do it while driving? Come on, I'm like tooling around at like two miles per hour. 
I can't find the auto start stop deactivate. It's got, oh, there it is, tiny button. Okay, let's try this again now that I've found the tiny button. That's crazy, man. Okay, and as before, we are in, let's make sure we're in sport mode, sport, and we're at complete stop. Three, two, one, and go. Much quicker on the zero to 30, and 60 and 7.64. That's acceptable. Not great, but acceptable. Now let's see if it does any better in the dirt. I think we'll switch it over to off-road mode, which will uh, keep the all-wheel drive system engaged and also um, mess with traction control to kind of give us better grip on this stuff. We'll see if it has enough power with this little two liter turbo to get us up the rock climb. You know, the suspension was nice and smooth, but uh, these 20 inch wheels just aren't helping me absorb much because of course they don't have very much sidewall. Sidewall is the area between the wheel and the, um, the tire that hits the road. So bigger wheels usually means less sidewall, which means less air cushion between me and the road. It's a critical aspect of suspension when going off road and this one is completely missing that. Um, also, smaller sidewall means that I can't air down the tires, although manufacturers prefer it if I don't. Also, the very small sidewall increases the opportunity of a puncture because you don't, just don't have a lot of distance for that tire to travel before it hits the rim, which you can pinch and then cause a, a hole. So, uh, yeah, we got a lot of issues today with this setup. But um, we're here not to test the extreme capabilities, but to see how the system responds when it's pushed to the limit. And here is our first challenge. Now this vehicle does have eight inches of ground clearance, but any underbody protection is minimal. It's mostly just plastic panels. So let's see what we can do here. Slowly over, 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 over. Now this should be pretty easy for it. And it is. Okay, now on with the real challenge, which is just ahead. Oof. Okay, to set this up, first off, let's turn off parking sonars because we don't want those going mad. And then I'm also gonna put my mode into off-road mode. Okay. And I'm gonna keep the transmission in normal drive and that's it. Can I turn on the camera? Is there a front camera? I don't remember if this has a front camera. Let's put it in reverse. No, no front camera. Oh wait. Aha, it does have a top-down view. Now this system uses a clutch pack in the middle. It's based on the Haldex system. Uh, and that, what that does is it uses a computer-controlled actuator to close the clutch and add more power to the back as necessary. This type of a test will really see just how much power goes back there, not just front to back, but left to right as well. We might also see some wheel braking, which means that uh, in a typical open differential setup, a wheel will start to spin if it has no traction and all the power goes out of that wheel. So what wheel braking does is it'll add a little brake to that wheel, which pushes power back into the system, theoretically to the wheels with grip. Okay, so in this situation, I have now slowed and come to a complete stop. I have no traction on that wheel, no traction on that wheel. This wheel does have traction, that wheel does as well. But we are on about a 20% grade, and so that means that, is this 20% grade? Yeah, it's about a 20% grade. Uh, so that means that that wheel has to do all of the heavy lifting. And by heavy lifting, I mean literally heavy lifting because this thing is heavy. Okay, add a little throttle, and I just want to see what does this system do. On the outside, do we see wheel braking? Oop, I'm feeling power going. 
feeling power move around the system and it pushes us through. All I did was keep the throttle in. I did not change it at all. I just tapped in a little throttle and the computer figured it out for me. As we continue up, power is continuing to shift around the system. I can just feel it, even though I can't see it anywhere. Come on, you got this. I'm just keeping my foot in the throttle. It's shifting power and sending me up. Yes, exactly what it's supposed to do. You know, throttle tip-in is really subtle. Sometimes these turbos are a little surgy. This one is not. Yeah, I can crawl at a very slow speed. I'm crawling along at one, two miles per hour here, and it's smooth. I mean, really, this, I thought this would do well, but this really did a great job. Would I hit Moab with it? No. On the front, you have a 20.9 degree approach angle, and on the back, you have a 26.7 degree departure angle. Not amazing by off-roader standards, but actually quite good for a three-row crossover. Do we want to go a bonus round? I think we want to do a bonus round. So what makes this next stage more challenging is the fact that the holes in the road are deeper and they're closer together, which will give us a real seesaw motion as we go up. Uh, and it also is a little bit steeper. So this will test not only uh, the all-wheel drive system, but also how well the clearances work, you know, because as we put our wheels into these grooves, we are going to be rubbing the bottom very close to the rocks. Here's the first one. That rear wheel is probably lifting up a little bit. Just keeping the throttle in and then lifting off the throttle as I get momentum out of it so that I don't ram into the next one. And I'm just taking this real slow. And the lack of drama is what I'm noticing here. This thing is just, it's just chugging forward. Yeah, it has to kind of sort itself out a couple times, but I'm doing no work here. My foot is about 10, 20% on the throttle. These are all season radials and they aren't the best tires, but this all wheel drive system is just a rock star. Let's watch the nose. Final climb, this is way steeper. Was that easy? Yeah, that was easy, like incredibly easy. There is one more off-roady party trick that this thing has, and that of course is hill descent control. And it will do it both forwards and backwards, but I'll turn around and do the forwards version, um, just because that's the one you'll most likely be using most of the time. Now we'll go down. Now. Um, this is an interesting setup because hill descent control isn't a button, it's actually in the off-road setting. So when I go into off-road mode, it automatically turns it on. Now, if I don't like that, I can disable it in uh, the menu here. But I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on right now, and we're just gonna let it drive down for me. Now, I'm hoping it'll do one or two mile per hour. Oh, oh release at one, two. Oh, yeah, easy. That's the speed a hill descent control system should be. I don't know why so many car makers, when they put it on, they just do, they like phone it in and they do like five miles per hour, which on a hill like this is simply too fast. Well, I'm impressed. This car did amazing. Um, also, I like the fact that this has kind of that fastback style, which looks cooler than the standard Atlas. Overall, I really like this thing. Now, if you need three rows, let's turn off those parking meters. Now, if you do need three rows, you can, of course, get the Atlas. It's the same exact hardware, and you can get it with the two liter or the V6, just like you can get this one. I think the two liter is fine. You get good economy, you get good capability. The only reason I think to really opt for this V6 is if you prefer the smooth, big power, which is fine, I'm right there with you, or if you need that 5,000 pound maximum towing capacity. For the class, I think this Atlas Cross Sport really does an excellent job. In fact, it is one of my favorites in the class, right along with the Honda Passport and I guess the Subaru Outback, although the Outback's not quite the same configuration. But if you wanted to have a vehicle day-to-day -day for the family, but then also do some modest off-road adventures on the weekend, I'd have no problem taking the Cross Sport out here. I think this is actually a really capable vehicle and it looks great. I love the roof line on this one and I think it looks much better than the three-row Atlas. 
For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, leave a comment, which would you choose? We'll see you again right here next week. And in two weeks, we have coming up a special off-road adventure featuring this very car. And Carlina will be back. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it.